Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode two of... I actually didn't have a name for the show, <laughs> for whatever this is. It's either Weekly Recap or Braga Catch-Up. I'm going to switch between the two names so you guys will get with it. You know what I mean. So my friend, Bobby Blanco, decided to throw his first official event, yay, called Bobby's Palace. Bobby's Palace. <laughs> And it was amazing. Congratulations, my friend. I had the best time. I was one of the many hosts, and it was amazing. So congratulations to my friend. I got to see Jessica. Jessica is my cousin. For all intents and purposes, she is my cousin. So don't question it. If it doesn't make sense to you, I don't care. Jessica is my cousin, and I'm really upset with her because she called me two weeks ago, telling me that she's going to be in town on the 8th, 9th, and 10th because she stays in Cape Town and then she doesn't come oh no she comes but then she doesn't call me and I have to hear from Tseho that she's in town so I definitely FaceTimed her and told her shit and she arrived immediately which is great because I actually was really happy to see her I'm just like what the fuck though I mean you're in my city you don't call me when I come to Cape Town I call you so how do you come to Joburg JSEC and you don't hit up Praga um hello the fuck <laughs> anyway she pulled up it was an amazing time. I have too much fun with Jessica. It's actually annoying. I get way too drunk with this girl. I had such, like, I can't even explain how much fun we had. And I'm, I'm annoyed because I decided I was leaving at 11 and I left at 11. She got there at 10. So we didn't have much time to actually have a good time. You know? The fuck? But anyway, it was good to see you. Jessica, don't do that shit again. If I hear you in Joburg and you don't hit me up, it's going to be war. War. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Bobby. Love you. What else happened at this party? I wasn't supposed to perform. This stupid bird. Hello? Sorry. I wasn't supposed to perform, but I decided I was going to perform for my friend because I'm supporting him. I saw Venom, he was playing hip hop. I mean, what else can happen? Yeah? So I performed one song for free. That's all you get for free, guys. Even though you're my friend. One. No. <laughs> Had the best time. Shout out to you, Bobby. So, I'm so excited because we got to go to Metro FM on Tifa Touches the Touchdown show with Ney. She was able to make this one, which is fantastic because I have major respect for Tifa Touch. He is one of like the pioneers of the industry in South Africa, actually globally, to be honest at this point. And um, I'm not going to lie, I knew I couldn't miss this one because I missed, I think, a previous interview that I was supposed to do on Metro but it was purely because of communicational issues. It wasn't my fault, I'm not a professional. Somehow I just didn't make it, or it was the last two even. So I'm just like, yo, no ways, I have to make this one come rain or sunshine. I even went to the salon, got my hair did, I wish I to present myself, you know, amazing, because I was about to think that they were gonna cut me off completely, but thank you so much. Metro has constantly given me so much love since the beginning of my career. So shout out to Metro FM, we had the best time, and I won the competition. Of course I was going to win the competition. And on top of that, the song that Ney, Ney won on a technicality, to be honest. And she better tell you guys the truth. Because backstage, I'm the one that said TLC. And she's like, okay, come on, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Oh, Beyonce. When you say old school, how far are you reaching? As an old school, like, 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 like TLC. Have That's like old school. school. And then she took it, and then she beat me. Guys, you can't beat Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson, Vala broke. But that was like a glitch in the system because now she won on a technicality, but it's fine. Braga came through and I won the quiz, okay? Shout out to my boy, Andy Lay. <laughs> Listen, I call Andy Lay, Andy Lay because our cast member, Annie, because she will actually, the Nigerians, I think, call him Andy Lay. That's how they pronounce it, Andy Lay. So she was like, where's Andy Lay? Andy Lay. So I'm like, okay, Andy Lay, that's your name. <laughs> it was so good to see Andy Lay. Um, he helped me out as he should because we are both young famous and African, so he should be helping me out and I appreciate him so much. Thank you so much, Andy Lee. <laughs> I won. I, won. <gasps> I did win a present though. Remember, I was about to say I should have gotten a gift. Didn't they say I got a spa thing? Where's the spa thing? Where's the gift? Where's the gift? I didn't get it. I even forgot about it. I was too excited from the win. I need to hit him up like, uh uh, where's my spa? Where's my spa day? I didn't get it, guys. I didn't get it. I uh touch. Give me my spa day. I deserve it. I mean, you know, ten. What I really, really enjoyed about this interview was so nice. It was so lighthearted. It was so fun, but I really liked the energy. I think they enjoyed it too. They loved the energy with me and they being there. We're pushing the song, as you guys all know, called Thick Slim. And it was, it was like, we came in big guns, basically. Also, Nay, what are you wearing, babes? 
you definitely outdressed me. Like, I didn't understand we were coming out like that. It's radio, babes. They can't see you. Uh-uh. I felt so underdressed. I was so embarrassed. Embarrassed. Yo, like, she came through. She had, like, a nice silver dress and nice heels. She got her hair and makeup did. I was just like, yes, this thing. Damn, that's the level of professionalism when you take that. That's crazy. Like, wow. She looked amazing. Okay, so I did an interview on Kai FM, and I'm so surprised that it trended the way that it did. I didn't expect it. But the one thing that I can really appreciate is how everyone said that I handled that interview very well. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I was visibly annoyed, but I do think that the reason why I handled that interview the way that I did is because it's something that I've dealt with throughout my whole career. Um, something that um, people feel they can do to me. I don't know if it's because I'm a woman. I do think it actually is because I'm a woman in the industry. And it's like they can't validate me on my accomplishments, but rather validate me or give me credit for the things that I've done because of some man or some association or something or something you know honestly I feel like as interviewers you should do your research because you know that I'm coming at least you know know my album name maybe so that we can talk about my album we can talk about stuff like that I don't think it's a problem to talk about my relationships but I think the way that it was done in this specific interview was um, hurtful it was hurtful but um, thank you so much for everyone that gave me my props on how I, I dealt with it. Like I said, it's something I've experienced throughout my whole career. So I think that's why I was able to deal with it the way that I dealt with it. And also, I would not disrespect Kai FM by swearing and shouting and stomping my feet and leaving and what, what, what. It's just, and, and also Sammy T. I would not, I would not disrespect him by also just being completely crazy and getting upset and storming off because I feel like that shows more of me than him if I had to respond in a certain way. And I also think as a woman, you always have to be cognizant of how you respond to disrespect or, or whatever. Because if a man responds that way, it's like, oh, okay, he's being a boss, he's being a G. But if a woman responds that way, you bitchy, you're difficult to work with, you're disrespectful. So I've always known that no matter what happens, assert yourself, um, be proud of your accomplishments, explain yourself clearly, um, but don't give them what they want by being disrespectful and rude because then it just says to them that you just a bitch, you know? But I think this is something that needs to be discussed as a society, to be honest, as a community, because I don't think I'm the only woman that's experienced something like this, and definitely not only in hip hop, women in all facets of work deal with this like they deal with just being ripped away from their hard work or or just like not giving their credit credit where it's due or giving their flowers all of that you know there's always something that people want to bring them down on so i just want to say thank you guys so much i saw all the comments the thing about me is that i have major anxiety so i get anxiety even if the comments are good <laughs> the comments are bad Ugh, the comments are good. Ugh, I'm just like, people are just talking about me. I don't know where it's gonna go. If it's gonna go left, I really don't know. So I really didn't want to see too much about it. I responded to a few people because I really was touched and um, I was really happy to see the comments from people because it just showed me that the people that really matter see your accomplishments. They they were defending me. They were talking about the things that they know me for as Nadia Nakaya, the, the person that's been in this industry for many years, that has accomplished many things. And to be able, and sometimes for myself, I forget that. But to be able to see the comments of people saying, yeah, no, I know Nadia from this, and I know Nadia from this accomplishment, and I know Nadia from that accomplishment, and Nadia has done a lot in the game. And that really was, um, it was amazing to see. So I just want to say thank you guys so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, but let's stop the hate train on Sammy T because he is still a respectable member of the entertainment radio entertainment industry. But I think this conversation is literally about the whole game and how they see women in it. So yeah, thank you guys so much.